What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here and welcome to our fifth platformer tutorial in Game Salad. Uh, let's just see where we left off uh, for anyone who hasn't been playing for a while because I haven't made a video in quite a few months. So we have some nice movement here. Oops, hold on. Let's reset this. We have some nice movement here. We can go left, right, we can jump up. Uh, feels pretty good with the gravity and everything. Uh, let's see. It's kind of weird how it's always facing left, so we can fix that. And then maybe we can add some pickups. So let's see. So let's go into our player actor and see why we're always facing left. So let's scroll all the way down to our rule where we set up which way we're facing, which is our self graphics flip horizontally. So what it checks for is our linear velocity and sees if we're moving to the right then it faces us to the right. If we're moving to the left, it faces us to the left. The problem here is I'm saying if our linear velocity is greater than zero, then it'll face to the right. Now, what's happening is when I'm not moving, it's set to maybe zero or 0.1 or negative or like 0 0.01 or some weird number, right? So it, it's somewhere around zero. So what we need to do is find out if we need to um, add to this or subtract from this to make it um, make our character face the correct direction so let's go ahead and set this to one and let's hit play and hopefully it'll work but it obviously doesn't because we're facing left and we're still facing left when we when we stop moving uh, so it's obvious that this is going to be negative one but just to kind of prove a point let's set it back to zero and let's say um, or no we'll just we'll just do this uh, the teacher and me. Okay, so we'll do negative one. That that should work, right? Because if it's um, not above one, it has to be below one. So we'll hit play. And now we're facing right. If we hit left, facing left. If we hit right, we're facing right. We're always facing right now. So we're facing the correct direction, and we're always facing right because that's the direction we're supposed to be going. Yay, that bug's fixed. All right, so now we want to add some coins. So if you remember... We downloaded the uh, platformer Redux pack from Kenny.nl, where we get almost all of our assets. So let's go ahead and open that up. We'll go into the PNG folder, uh, Portable Network Graphics, and let's look for items. Uh, yeah, perfect gold coin. This is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and open gold coin. And it, yes, if it already exists, there it is, coin gold. It's 128 by 128 pixels. I can almost guarantee you that we're not going to need it that big, but we'll, we'll get there. Uh, we can also name our background because uh, that's always good to do. We always have to name all of our actors so that we keep everything nice and tidy. We should also start uh, naming our rules to keep that nice and tidy. All right, so let's go ahead and create an actor for our coin. So we'll name this coin right off the bat. We'll go to actor and we'll drag our coin image in. Now we can set its size to whatever we want, but let's just see how big it is at 128 by 128. Um, make sure you don't drag it out from the images folder, make sure you drag it out from the actors folder or it'll look really funny. So here's 128 by 128, so it's way too big. So let's go ahead and delete that. And now let's go to size and change this to uh, let's say 32 by 32. That seems a little more reasonable. Let's drag this in. That looks like a coin. That looks like a pretty good sized coin. So uh, let's go ahead and put a couple of these around our game. Let's say you have to jump up here to get them. So let's drag a couple coins over here. Alright, so it kind of tempts you to go that way, to jump, but then, oops, there's a pit over here, so you better jump right, right? That's that's the idea anyway. We're probably not even going to get close with the physics, but um, we'll, we'll move them and adjust as we play the game, as we iterate our game, right? So we need to do something when we run into the coin, because right now our player is just going to go right through these coins. So let's see, let's, let's just prove that. So yep, we went right through the coins, nothing happened, nothing happens when we try and collect them. So, what we can do is make a rule. 
in our coin actor, let's say when we collide with the player, and then in the do section, what we want it to do is destroy itself. So now, when we come over here and run into these coins, doo -doo -doo, got them, they all disappear. So it's not really adding anything to our character, so we should probably add that next. Uh, what we can do is we'll go to our game, and um, instead of setting it in our player and adding an attribute called like how many coins the player has, we're just going to add it to our game attributes because those can be accessed from anywhere. So we can access it from the coin actor or the player actor. So that's where we want to put it. So we're going to hit um, the add attribute button up here in our game section in the game tab. And we're going to make it a um, an integer because it's a number. So a boolean is a true or false, text is text, integer is a number. So we'll make it an integer. And we'll call this coins. How many coins have you collected? And it starts you at zero. All right, so now in our coin, right before we destroy the actor, we want to add one to the coin, right? Add one to that value. So we'll just go in here and type in change attribute. Move it before the actor, before they destroy this actor, because if we destroy it, it's going to stop running everything. And then we're going to go to the newly created attribute coins. We'll go to game, or right where we put it in the game tab. And then we scroll down to coins. And we're going to change our coins attribute, which is currently zero, to one. However, if we just write one, every time we hit a coin, it's going to change it to one. Then we hit, when we hit the second coin, is going to change it to one. And then when we hit the third coin, it's going to change it to one. So we're not actually going to know how many coins we picked up. So let's delete that. And we're going to click on the expression editor. And what we're going to do is take the current amount of coins and add one to it. So if you have three coins right now and you hit one, it's going to take three coins and then add one to it to make it four. So we'll go to attributes. We'll go to game. Coins. Plus one. So now it's going to say, it's going to change your current coins to your current coins plus one. It's kind of a weird way of doing it, but it works. And um, let's hit play. And this is probably going to work, but we're not going to know because we can't really see how many coins we have. So we can't really troubleshoot it yet. So let's, let's fix that. Uh, let's go over here and um, add a new user interface element for the coins. So let's hit the new actor and call this uh, coin counter. But we're going to place it right here in the left side of our screen. This is where we want the text to show up of our camera. And in the layers, we don't want the uh, the coin counter to move. So we need to create a new layer for it called user interface that is not scrollable. That way, even if your camera moves all around the scene, you can still see the coins. So we're going to hit new layer. And here it is. And we're just going to put this all the way on top because we need our user interface on top of everything. And we're going to make it not scrollable because we don't want it to move. We're going to take our coin counter and move this up one to be in that layer. And let's go ahead and name this UI, just so we remember that's our user interface. And um, let's go into our actors again. And let's make our coin counter display how many coins we currently have. So let's go ahead and go into our actor. Uh, let's say uh, we're going to use the behavior display text. And it says, hello world. We click the E. And we can change this to an attribute. And we'll say game coins. All right. So now it's going to show in black text how many coins we have. So relative to the actor, this all looks all right. Let's hit play. Zero. And now I can run over here. And when I jump and grab these coins, it adds to how many coins we have. And that's perfect. However, uh, we don't want this little black, uh, this little white uh, text box 
um, to cover up our, our screen. So let's go ahead and go into our coin counteractor and then go to color and set the alpha, which is the transparency, to zero. That's going to make our actor invisible, but the display text will still show up and draw in black. So there it is. And if we uh, move in front of any background elements, you can see that it's actually uh, in an invisible background. And it looks pretty cool. And you have to go over here to grab these coins and avoid this platform. And it's starting to look like a platformer, right? All right, so that's it for this one. I'm not sure how long I've been rambling on for. Thanks for watching and expect some more soon. Peace.